Hey guys, a couple of years ago, I saw a Kickstarter for a gizmo that you bolt onto a camera that supposedly enables you to take better shots and to simplify some of the complicated processes associated with taking those shots. The gizmo in question is called Arsenal 2 Pro, a camera assistant, a little chip in a box that sits on top of your camera. Now the whole point of these particular bits of kit is that they're supposed to add the kind of features that we're used to having on our smartphones to our mirrorless or DSLR cameras. Now I backed that gizmo back in 2020 and as you probably know, a fair bit of shit has happened in the intervening two years, between 2020 and 2022. But amazingly, I got my Arsenal 2 in the post and this is it. this works is you bolt it onto the top of your camera it connects via a USB-C connection and then you use this along with an app on your smartphone to take photographs. Now Arsenal 2 has got a few tricks up its sleeve some of which I have to say I wasn't overly interested in but some of them really did pique my interest and that was why I ponied up 150 bucks for this thing. I didn't set my expectations too high and based on my initial testing, that's probably just as well. Now, the three things that interested me that this Arsenal 2 Pro can improve is focus stacking, time lapses, and panos. I've got the uh, Fujifilm X-T4, and the focus stacking on there is shit. It's awful. I hate it. It's really weirdly designed, and it's a real pain in the ass to use. Even if you practiced at it, I just hate the bloody thing. And when I found out that this does focus stacking, then I was almost in on that alone. The panos function on this is really quite neat. That was actually one of the first disappointments because in the firmware, the current firmware, panos are not enabled. Uh, you get a live pano. So you basically take the shots and you see the pano build up on your smartphone screen. So you can modify the extent of it as you go and see exactly what you've got. And the third thing that this does that was the reason I bought it was time lapses. And one thing in particular that this promises to do is the so-called holy grail time lapse, where you go from daytime to night, which is a notoriously difficult thing to do, a real pain in the ass. You have to dick around with bulb ramping and aperture and twiddling with the settings as you go along, and it's a real pain in the ass. And anything that can simplify that process to produce those day to night transitions is worth the money. Uh, and that's something that I got this for. When I installed it, I had some permissions issues with the location settings. So I deleted the app, reinstalled it, and that fixed that. And then when I first put this on the camera, it couldn't see it. And I found out it was because the USB socket was quite tight and you just have to push it in a little bit further and hey presto, it appeared. Now in terms of first impressions, I think it's a really nicely designed bit of kit. It's got dual USB connections and it's got some cool LEDs on the back. I'll power it up so you can see that. And it does these cool kind of Knight Rider style animations which include a kind of a breathing animation when you're in handheld mode which is quite funky so let's go talk briefly about a couple of the things that uh, i've discovered in my initial testing and one of the first of those is that it seems to work sporadically so for instance i've got my xt4 and if i put that into the focus stacking mode sometimes it will take the first shot at say so F5 uh, and ISO 6400, uh, and then it'll take four more shots that are completely blurred and out of focus. And it seems to be something to do with the connection being incorrect with the camera, because if I turn off the Arsenal and turn off the camera and then turn the Arsenal back on and turn the camera back on, it starts behaving the way it should do, taking the correct aperture, ISO and exposure settings to take those sequence of shots. It's also got a long exposure function where it will take a series of shots and combine them using a kind of median process like you use in Photoshop. And like indeed some of the smartphone apps like Spectre on the iPhone do, 
where you get this kind of pseudo lung exposure effect, which is handy if you forgot your ND filters and you can't limit the amount of light coming into the sensor, you can kind of pretend to do it. The results from that were kind of pretty much how I expected, which is not great. I mean, you know, they don't look like a still, but they don't look like a long exposure really either. They're just kind of some weird kind of hybrid, uh, which isn't very good. Now, one of the flagship features of this and the thing you'll see in the very nicely designed promotional videos for this that Ryan Stout has put together is the so-called deep color mode. The story behind that is that they used AI, machine learning, they gave a AI system hundreds of thousands of landscape photographs and trained it so that it would know what settings to use on your camera in any given situation. So, for instance, if you're shooting a sunrise, it will know it has experience of sunrise photos. It knows the settings that it should use and it combines those with live data that's receiving from the camera such as vibrations and the amount of light and all that kind of stuff to make a decision on the fly what settings to use and to take the photograph and the best i can say about that mode i suppose is that it doesn't fuck it up but it certainly seems to be no different whatsoever to auto mode don't know what really what i was expecting from that and I'm not entirely sure who that's kind of aimed at. I think if you've got a DSLR or mirrorless camera, the odds are you kind of know your way around the settings. The Arsenal, pretty much, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be using this with your camera on a tripod, but it does have a handheld mode, which you access by double tapping the power button. But instead of the camera taking the decisions about the settings that you would have if you had it in auto mode, the Arsenal takes the decisions for you. I found that mode pretty hinky, to be honest. It, it wasn't great. Uh, I just found it really quite mediocre. And the best I can say about it is that it was competent. One of the features that I haven't tested yet is crowd control, which is the ability to remove people from an otherwise busy scene. So if you go to some, you know, tourist spot like here, I'm in Australia, and I go to the Sydney Opera House, I can set Arsenal up, put it in crowd control mode and have it shoot a series of photographs which it then averages to remove all the people. It only works if the people are moving. If you've got some belligerent arsehole sat on the steps of the opera house eating a packed lunch and they're there for an hour and a half, then they're going to be in your shot, you know. It doesn't clone them out of existence. It uses an averaging mode, but it's still nice because it's automated and you get the finished article that crowd control photo with all the people removed straight to your iPhone so you can wang it straight up on social media if you want. And that's one of the other features I haven't mentioned actually, which is that it does have onboard storage. There's a little SD card slot here, uh, which you pop open like that. And you've got to put a standard little SD card in there. I've got a 64 gig one in there and it will record all the photos on there. But in all cases, it does record the photos normally on your camera's SD card anyway. So you've always got those as a fallback. One of the other stacking modes on the Arsenal is a exposure blending mode, you know, like HDR, which I have tested. And the best I could say about that is it works. I did give the smart time lapse a quick check when I was down at the, uh, the beach the other day and it worked well. Uh, and I'll stick the little, very short little time lapse I did in that mode up on screen. Thus far, the things that I like on the Arsenal 2 Pro that I think are good are firstly the focus stacking. When it works, and it may just be me being a dick and not configuring my X-T4 correctly, and there's some stupid mistake I've made, but I mean, I follow the setup guide, the video they released on their website, so I don't think I have. But anyway, when focus stacking works, it works well. It's a good system, and actually the merge files from that are okay. The smart time lapse is really rather neat. I particularly like the fact that as you're shooting the time lapse, you get a live preview of the video on your phone. And so you can quickly see whether it's a time lapse you want to continue with and let it play out for however long you want, or if you think actually this composition's crap or 
there's not enough movement in this scene to justify it, and you can pull the pin. The exposure Bracketing is okay. I wouldn't say it was sensational. It produces a quite HDR-like image. Disappointment for me, I suppose, the deep color mode. I mean, they make a big song and dance about this in their marketing materials with all sorts of fleshy diagrams like some CSI thing with arrows coming in saying, you know, shutter speed. And, you know, the moon is in Sagittarius and there's an earthquake in Chile. Therefore, we have this setting. and. Uh, I just don't think it's very good. Based on the sample images I've been taking in this deep color mode, it's, it's absolutely no different to auto mode on the camera. So that's it for my, it has turned into a bit of a review. Um, I didn't mean it to, it's just my initial impressions. I'm gonna give it a full go, really put it through its paces. Uh, I've already been shooting some video for that and I will test all of the different modes and find out if this is something I recommend, if I think it's worthwhile ponying up the money. You won't get it for the 150 I pay for. I think it retails for substantially more than that now, like um, 450 bucks or something. So for that kind of money, you know, uh, it really has to bring something useful to the table. And I will be bearing that in mind when I review it, but I'll put all of the different modes properly to the test and tell you whether I think something like this, this camera assistant, this AI based camera assistant is worth your money. Anyway, I'm blathering on, I'm talking too much. I'm losing my bloody voice. I've been talking so much. I did another video just now. And so I will shut up. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the old like button down there on the, Right underneath this video and uh, to see more of my content in your feed please hit the subscribe button just to the right of that like button be so kind and i'll see you on the next one